Hey, it's Joseph here, and you are here to hear more about Canvas. I did the initial introduction in a previous video, so please do check that video out. I'll leave the link in the description. Since then, I was really happy with the results and had reached out to Canvas to learn more about the scanning technique and their scan to CAD services. And they offered to guide me through as well as sponsor this video to tell you more about what I have learned. Canvas is an app and service that allows you to capture spaces in 3D with an iPad or iPhone. You can save hours on field measurements as built drawings and CAD models because you can turn your canvas scans into CAD models. So please allow me to explain further. There's a few things that you need to start scanning with canvas. First is the device. Currently, Canvas is supported on Apple devices with LiDAR sensors that have Pro after their names. It is the lens that doesn't protrude from the back of your device. iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro, and Pro Max have this, and iPad Pros that have been released 2020 or later. If you have any of those devices already, great, start with it. And I have chosen to use iPad Pro here. And just FYI, the base model is priced at 799 US dollars. Then we've got to download the app, search Canvas, and pick Canvas LiDAR 3D measurements. I also have left the app link in the description so you can use that too. And of course, you want to make sure the space that you're about to scan is in a presentable state. Turn on all the lights and open the shades for maximum visibility. And I often forget, but cleaning your camera lens is not a bad idea either. As you start the app and log yourself in, we can start the scanning process. Hit the plus button and create new home. Hit the plus button again to start scanning process. It is a good idea to start scanning the area that has a good amount of detail to anchor everything onto, and the corner of the room is a good place for me to start. Flat and blank surfaces can cause canvas to lose tracking, so I will maneuver the device around the flat areas where you don't see any information from. Keeping the scan area between 3 to 10 feet is ideal, and 15 feet is a maximum range of the LiDAR sensor here. Generally, you want to move along the wall and try to use up, over, then down, over motion to do the fence painting motion. Avoid scanning area twice, move across the room slowly. As one should, make sure you capture the structures, corners, and edges of the walls that meet other elements. Highly reflective surfaces, light fixtures, and bright sunlight can cause distortion. Try going around mirror stainless steel finished fridges and large light fixture areas. You can also request a free scan review to validate your scan before ordering scan to CAD. Also, you can submit multiple scans. The fee for processing is based on square feet, so breaking up the rooms and spaces logically is a good idea. For a space like this, I like to keep the large space as one and stop around the entry of the kitchen area, then start another scan for the kitchen area space again. I'll keep a bit of overlap to make sure the two scans can be merged together. The merged area won't count towards the square footage. Canvas can also capture exteriors, but it does have some limitations as the sensors can only reach about 15 feet. A space like this is fine, but anything further away would not really be registered. As mentioned, bright sunlight can cause alignment issues, so avoid scanning into the sun. Canvas cannot scan landscapes and fine slopes that are around the building. Therefore, use Canvas Scan for built structures. And moreover, practice makes everything perfect. Once you have a good idea how to move along the spaces, scanning a large space like this within minutes is quite easy. If you were to use lasers and tape measures, I can be here for hours, even though this is a quite simplistic space. I often avoid measuring very complex spaces because it just takes so long and it quickly becomes laborious and very confusing. But sometimes you just have to do them and figuring out the twists and turns of space of some of the residential spaces can often be quite challenging to measure manually. Even though it is not really needed, I still measure the width and the depth of large rooms like this. Let's do a quick sanity check with the laser scanner. 
So this is showing is 31 feet and 6 inches this side the lengthwise to this side it is 31 feet and 2 inches so I guess a little bit shorter on that side 31 and 6 that way and then 31 and 2 that way oh and actually let's measure the ceiling as well the topmost the flat portion of the ceiling 15 feet and 10 inches so if my scan turned out to be that way we are golden canvas claims 98 to 99 accuracy compared to the manual scanning in my experience this has been true for areas that has been scanned properly something as detailed as a cabinetry and millwork you still want to measure things manually and jot down your notes pro tip since we are using an ipad i would take photos with it actually and write down measurements on top with the apple pencil and i find this to be the easiest way as an architectural designer taking your field measurements and turning them into an as-built model is a common practice depending on complexity of the space you have surveyed it can take up to half of the day or maybe multiple days detailing out all openings that are on multiple floors since you have now scanned the space with canvas you can submit an order of scan to cad instead Whilst Canvas's scan to CAD is processing, you can do either the tasks such as the expense report since I've just made the trip out to do the survey. I'm often overlapped with other projects, so I'll happily work on other projects that need me in the meanwhile. Most of the scans will be processed within two business days, especially for the ones less than 1,000 square feet. Anything more can take one or two more days. You can also submit for rush job for a quicker turnaround. You actually have several choices in what you will receive. For 2D drawings, you can receive a Dimensions PDF plan along with DWG and a 2D Revit file. I can use this to quickly send drawings to clients and consultants. For 3D drawings, you get to choose which file format you would like to have. SketchUp, Revit, Chief Architect, or 2020 Design File Formats. Since I work in both SketchUp and Revit, I've ordered both to see what they are like. So let's have a look at the result. For the 2D drawings that I have received, I can simply share this PDF file with my client to kickstart the test fit process. Or just send off this DWG file to the consultants for their coordination. And I actually have received this Revit file of the 2D plan. I'm working on Revit 2021 version, so I'm just going to drag this onto Revit. And it is going to upgrade from 2018 version of the file to 21. And in there, you see all the measurements over the 2D here. Actually, we can pop it into 3D to see what's going on. Obviously, you got the plan with a ceiling on top. And basically, that's what you're seeing in there on the floor plan. And that will suffice for sharing the 2D plan of the space. And for the 3D file, let's go ahead and open up the SketchUp file. And here is the SketchUp file. I can kind of orbit around to show you what is going on. And you can see that things are set in components and groups for me to manipulate easily. I can hide this to look inside the model and perhaps pop in there. Set myself onto the ground, look up, look around like so, and perhaps increase the field of view so that I see a bit more. So I can just kind of look around what is going on you can see several elements are already in there in the kitchen and look around this side obviously we don't have loose furnitures but we even got the baseboards and the power plugs along the wall and the garage door has been modeled correctly along with the dormers of the roof so it looks quite accurate to me for the Revit file I can just go ahead and drag this onto Revit so it's going to upgrade from 2018 to 21 again. And here immediately on the 3D view, we basically see the exact same thing. We can go to the floor plan 
And if I go in here, you can see that every element inside of this model has been modeled with the native elements of Revit. So I can actually go ahead and modify all the walls and such. So if I need to nudge a few things, I can do that. Although the baseboard will have to follow as well as the placement of these water fountains. So if I need to move this kitchen island for whatever reason in the future, then I can go ahead and move it. Although I'm just gonna undo that. Or if I need to replace the door with something else, perhaps swing it the other way or do something else with it, then, then I can simply do the things that I normally do inside of the Revit. And in terms of the elevations, let's go ahead and click on that one to see the elevation of the building. Although there were a few rooms on this side, which I did not scan, so it is not coming up. But at least on this side, things looking good here, especially the dormers that we have mentioned. And we can probably do some sections here as well. So I can go to view, section, and then cut a section in this way and make sure we got everything and then go ahead and go to view and you can see that everything is showing up correctly let's go ahead and move a bit more so that i see the dormers on top would that work better yep so there it is pretty good and just same as sketchup you can see the baseboards and even the switches in the types they were as well as the location Instead of me sitting down and producing all of these nitty gritty details, I can do other things whilst Canvas is processing all of that for me. By the way, you can visit Canvas's website to get your hands on with the example files, see them yourselves to understand what kind of files and the models you can expect to have. And on the website, they also have frequently asked questions section that goes over in-depth information that I also have learned a lot from. Their customer success team was very helpful in answering all of my niche case and nitty gritty questions. So if you need help, you can also just drop a line to to support at canvas.io and I'll leave that in the description. Canvas also decided to help the viewers to start off with them. You can use the code Joseph Kim to receive $100 in scan to cad credit and you can find the Canvas's website link and the code in the description. And if you have liked this content, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. And as always, thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.